Welcome to Middle Fingers Up, the show where we hold our heads high and our middle fingers higher. I'm your host, Kieran McKay. Well, today I'm sitting down with Lori Brown of Calgary, who offers a boutique style portrait experience that includes professional hair and makeup and wardrobe styling in every session. Lori is accredited and a multi award winning portrait photographer who believes that every body is beautiful and deserves to have legacy portraits. As a photographer, Lori prides herself of helping her clients see that no matter what insecurities they may have about their body, it is 100% possible to have portraits of themselves that they will love. And I love that. I I appreciate this. I, I'm going to like do a full disclosure. Welcome, Lori. I took this off your site because I went to write your bio and I was like, I don't think there is anything better that I could say because of my experience with you. So I, I really appreciate that you come from a place where you want to help your clients see what you see when you're holding that camera up. So welcome. Thank you so much, Karen. It's nice to be on this side of the table. Um, <laughs> I'm a little nervous because oh. the spotlight's on me, but I, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, and <laughs> I love that you're nervous because literally before we start recording, um, and I get them too, like guests and I both share the nerves and I know I should be better and calm you down, but I'm like, I'm nervous too. Um, <laughs> but what I appreciated with you was that you – uh, started to like, oh, feel the nerves and feel you weren't sure what to say or do. And I was like, oh, Lori, you're <laughs> feeling what uh, I felt when I was driving to your house. So <laughs> I am uh, to take those pictures. So I'm really glad to hear you also going through that. <laughs> yes, definitely. But I think this is going to be fun. Um, it is like just sitting across from a friend. Yes. So I'm looking forward to our chat today. Yes. And that's exactly what it is, is we're just having a conversation um, I really wanted to bring you on today because of my experience in your studio with you. And I'm really hoping that at the end of this conversation, people are going to feel the same way that I felt in there with you. And I'm, I'm sure they are because um, I got some fun questions. Hey. I'm, I'm like very excited that we're sitting here. I am so honored. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, okay, so before we get into it, uh, we're going to do a little segment called What Do You Want to Put Your Middle Fingers Up To? So I'm going to ask you, what's on your mind? What do you want to take off your chest? So for me, I was, I was just telling this story to a client yesterday, someone who I was booking a photo shoot with. And we were talking about body image and mm. being over a certain age and taking boudoir photos. And it made me think of a story. And I think what I want to put my middle finger up to is not the man in this situation, although mm. I kind of want to do oh. that too. <laughs> But it's actually to the woman in the situation who, like many women, did not really stand up for herself mm. or for her sex. Hmm. So let me tell you the story. Yeah, yeah. I'm like so, super curious. It was a couple of years ago. It was a photography conference. And a friend of mine was, she was, well, I'm not really, I wasn't really friends with her at the time. But she was the one presenting a boudoir session, like teaching other photographers just doing her presentation and it came to question and answer period and this old or I'm not even sure if he brought it up somebody asked well how do you pose someone who is like overweight hmm. and she was talking about it but then sometimes when you get into rooms like this um it's all a bunch of professional photographers so everyone likes to chime in right oh, yeah so this this older white slightly overweight guy himself mm -hmm. <laughs> chimes in and he's like oh I just tell them you know if they've got like extra weight on them and he he even said something along the lines of mermaid legs as in their thighs touch oh my god oh, I just suggest that they go lose some weight first what and I was like my jaw was on the floor yeah I was like burning red I was a photographer to, a photographer that's sad. I was so And then mad. you wonder why people don't like to take pictures. 
Yeah, I'm like, if you said that to me as a photographer, I wouldn't let anyone take my picture ever again. I wouldn't go and lose the weight and come back to you. Yeah. Certainly not. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. But what made me mad, even more than his comment, was her reaction. Mm. She had an opportunity to slap him down, (laughs) which is what I would have done in that situation. Um, But she was way too nice because that's how we're raised, right? Yeah. We're raised to be good girls and polite, and we don't want to cause conflicts Mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. And so she really let him off the hook. I don't remember what she said, but she really let him off the hook. Yeah. And I really thought that was a moment where she was the leader in the room. She she should have educated the entire room. That was a good opportunity to say, and here's what we don't say, and here's what doesn't help. Uh, Because you have power when you're holding that camera. And even though... Uh, after photos, the the person, you know, the talent or whoever's, you know, having these pictures taken might feel the power. But certainly from my experience during a photo shoot, it's all about maybe gaining and finding that power, but you don't walk in with it. And, and, and maybe not even when you go to Sears to take those family cheesy, port, you know, like it's, it's scary to have that camera flash before you, at least for, for me. And to have that kind of mentality in your you know, scope of practice, that that's sad. And I wonder for that woman too, like there's always a part of many of us that believe it. And, and when we know we should say something or do something, it's hard to refreeze. It's hard to speak up and, and, you know, I'm sorry, but like white men are, are the powerful ones that run the show. And it's very hard to stand up to, to a white man uh, in my world. I mean, my husband would disagree. He'd, he'd say, <laughs> yeah, okay, but he doesn't count. Um, so I, I can see where the power, right, it, it kind of shifts in that kind of a it's, conversation. It's easy for me to sit here and tell the story and say, oh, I would have done this. Honestly, I might have done the same thing as her. So I was raised just like her. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm always, yeah, just, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything, yeah. right? That's one of the mantras I was raised on. Totally. But, and and even I could have said something as a participant. Every, like, he spoke up. He yeah. was not the leader of the room. But I... Yeah, the bystanders are always, in my mind, the most powerful ones in my experience. Uh, you know, like, even I talked about this in episode one when I had that uh, whole experience, racial experience at the National. And there were two bystanders standing there, too, and they actually could have said something or done something. And you're right, like even for those of you that are there, but I think in the moment, like when we look back, right, hindsight's a bitch. (laughs) What we think we coulda, shoulda, woulda. And I always think it's interesting to go back and think, okay, why did I do what I did instead of why didn't I? Like there's a reason why no one else said something. So it's one of those things I I, I think that's fair that you want to go back and say how dare you or whatever, you know, or sometimes when you have those thoughts later, like, wow, why didn't I say this? But it's just dangerous, the power that we have as professional photographers, because just as much as I can boost your confidence with your photo shoot experience, I could crush you. Oh, 100%. Like, if, like that guy, if, if yeah. he had anyone come into the studio and treated them that way, yeah. he, he would crush them. For sure. For sure. Because isn't it like for every like, one good picture there's like a hundred that sucked so I'm just thinking from my perspective as take pictures of myself and like, oh my gosh there's how many of how many did I have to take to have this one good one and so you're right you have somebody that you're taking the all these pictures and it takes one thing to say uh which you know is I I as you see I always have notes and I'm sure I'll get to it later but I'm gonna pull this one out now my experience with you and I remember coming home and I'll talk more about my photo shoot later but one thing I'd like to note is when I came home that day I talked to my husband about my experience and two women in a room and it's a vulnerable experience for me and my vulnerability is going to bring something out in you you're either going to be comfortable with that or not or whatever and because you've been doing this for some time it's great that you are comfortable with whatever vulnerability your clients bring and your to have a woman compliment and validate another woman is so fucking powerful. It just because like we don't do it that often. We're our own worst critics, and then after that, we're the worst critics to the next woman. 
And we, especially if we don't know her, <laughs> you know, maybe when we get to know her, we're like, oh, okay, but you, the way that you help bring out my confidence that day came from your genuine compliments and validation and patience and recognizing those moments where it's like uh, I need a break or something and or even calling a break or what so I, I appreciate you know that my experience with you wasn't that so and I, I, I'm sure a lot of your other all your other clients probably would say the same thing too so thank you for that because that's how you're not like that dude over there you know and, and that is I think one of the things I'm really good at it's just is my superpower is feeling how people feel mm -hmm. and always wanting them to feel more comfortable because I'm quite like an awkward person in moments <laughs> and I love it when people make me feel more comfortable. Yeah. So I'm always trying to do that for people as much as I can. And it kind of works out that comfortable and relaxed people, um, that really comes across in their images. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the secrets to getting really great images. Mm. Well, I believe it. Um, okay, so I am going to give up my middle finger and uh, join you because I think that was a really good story that you shared and I appreciated that. And so I'm also going to put my middle finger up to that too. So thank you for that. I appreciate that story. I never know what you guys are going to say and I love that because... <laughs> It can be anything or nothing or what. And so I always say, don't tell me because, again, I don't I don't want it to be practiced or whatever. So I, I'm really glad that you chose that because it's such a nice segue into why we're here today. This episode is part of my whole body image campaign. So I've recorded one of the episodes just before your and my time. And it was uh, Stephanie's back from the fertility episode talking about our eating disorder type of symptoms we both weren't diagnosed with it however we both over child you know adolescence and going into adulthood exhibited symptoms for me was restrictive dieting and um body image issues where like I will stand you know I was telling Stephanie and I'm like I can't believe I'm saying this and I'm saying it again but like I I will I would stand in front of my full-length mirror every day before work and wear my outfit and make sure that I like I pretend to sit so I could see how many rolls I had because for me my stomach is like my biggest enemy which sucks because that part of me also gave birth to two healthy kids too so it's kind of this complex that as some of us women have and so I, I thought, okay, like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm in my 40s, I'm going to start addressing some of these things. And so I'm going to do this body image campaign. And over the summer, it, I called it the tummy is the new black, <laughs> like, we're bringing the tummy back. If, if I'm healthy, and I eat healthy, and I take care of myself mentally and physically, then I'm doing enough, and I'm doing a lot. And I don't need to put this pressure in my head to look a certain way. And so with my own struggles, I on social media stumbled upon this 40 over 40 campaign that you uh, were doing. And um, you had, I think you were just launching it. And so I reached out to you. And to me, this campaign was very life changing. And this is why I've asked you to be here. Uh, but before we go there, I thought we could have a little bit of fun. I have some questions prepared that I would love myself to get to know you a little bit better, but also the people listening because. Um, I think I think there's a lot more lot more layers to you than just this woman that holds a camera and takes pictures of people. So, so I, I if you don't mind, we can. Of course. Yeah? Okay. All right. Let's do it. Um, so I, I, I can we just start at the beginning? Like how how did you get into photography? It, it came from my own need. So, hmm. and kind of rediscovering a love that I had. So, hmm. when I had kids. You know, you want to take these beautiful photos and of your babies and what you're seeing in the camera is like not matching what my vision was. And I yes. was like, how do you do that? So I started to search out some education. Now, this was before all like YouTube and all this stuff. Like there was not a ton of resources. So I went to Mount Royal University and took some courses and over the years have I'm, I'm constantly uh, upskilling. So I'm still, I will never stop learning and taking courses, but that's kind of where it started was I just wanted to take better photos of my kids and then my family. And then I started to take pictures of other people's kids and families. And the first person who ever paid me, I was doing 
a mother and son, like it was his first birthday shoot. And she was like, what should I do? And I was like, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like, what? how should I pose? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, honestly, I I mean, you look good. So I'll take this these photos here. And I, But I went home and I was like, oh, my God, I need to learn how to pose people. Oh, right. Yeah, so then yeah, I yeah. went down that path yeah. of learning how to pose women. I found the person who is still my mentor today. Her name is Sue Brace. And she's been so amazing at teaching women all over the world, and men, all yeah. over the world, how to pose women mm-hmm. um, in the best way possible and make them feel comfortable. And so once I discovered her, then I discovered this whole area of like, oh, well, I could provide hair and makeup for these people too. And I would like that. Mm-hmm. Like as a mom of young children at the time, like I don't have any time for myself. Yeah. So if I could just show up and someone else could make me look beautiful and tell me how to pose and make sure that that hair was off my face mm-hmm. and I didn't have sideburns coming in, <laughs> <laughs> then yeah. I'm like, that's a that's an experience I like to create for people. And once I started doing that, I, I was like, okay, I have found my love. Right. This is what I love to do. Forget the babies. Never did weddings. Like, yeah. I found what I love, and that is photographing women giving them an experience where they can just show up right but feel like they know what they're doing oh that's amazing (laughs) so so this this wasn't your career so we so you're having babies and doing a whole different job when you discovered how you wanted to like that's so that's amazing I have a friend who is the same in the way of I can do this you know, like I would never think, oh, like, why don't I look into how I could? I just assume, and probably a lot of other women and people out there too that would just assume, well, I just don't pose well versus it's a learned thing. Like, well, I just don't take pictures well. You hear that all the time. Yeah. So good, cause that's so cool that you decided to go with young kids, go that different route. Because again, for, for many of us with young kids, it's like, keep that camera away from me for the next <laughs> however many years it takes to feel great again. So I, I love And so what, what were you doing for work then at that time? So I was working in IT for an oil and gas company. <laughs> Just laugh because uh, it makes so much sense that you would do something like IT or you hear people in the accounting world or my sister-in-law is a lawyer and actually is has found this and, and it's actually photography too. But it's interesting, like a lot of people pick the opposite in life of what they maybe are supposed to or like be meant to be doing and it's almost like this therapeutic vibe of what they enjoy ends up being this creative you know outlet that's just dying to come out and here you're doing it and now yeah well I was gonna say like how I re like rediscovered an old love because I did take photography in high school in grade Aww. nine. Aww. So like the dark room yes. with all the chemical <laughs> smells and taking pictures of my friends and wanting to do something a bit more glamour mm. back then. But that it just wasn't like a job. Right. You know, um, I didn't grow up with a ton of money. And mm-hmm. so I really wanted to have like a real career, make good money and not be worried. Right. right. So of course I'm like, well, I need to be on a path of going to the best university, yeah. getting a great degree, getting that job and then being secure for life. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it wasn't until I realized, Oh, wait a minute. Now I have money. I can actually buy a really good camera. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I can, you know, use that to take pictures of my kids. And then that's when you realize, well, I don't know how to use this camera. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there's I could learn. lots of buttons and gizmo gadgety things to cameras that like I don't even know how to use my own phone and the camera in my phone let alone what you know what I saw at your house and that wasn't even all of the stuff I, I think you only had some things take you know that you took out that day yes yeah I never bring <laughs> out everything because that would be overwhelming you'd be yeah, there sure. all day <laughs> so how long have you been is it practicing photography or doing photography yeah so um I guess since my first son was born, probably. So he was born in 2004. Okay. He's turning 18, actually, in oh two days. Oh, my goodness. Or wait, no, it's... Yeah, it's in two days. Good thing it's not today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whole, you're going to have an 18-year-old. You're going to have yeah. an adult in your house. Yes. Ooh, that's a tricky time because they're, they're adults, but they're really not, but they are. Very much feeling that vibe, Yeah. Like he's, he's like adult size yeah. and stuff, but still a kid. 
to me. Wow. So, so almost 18 years you've been doing this. Yeah. Oh so, I mean, well, on that learning path, right? So I, I say more that my business started when I left that old job and that was 2013. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So just coming up to 10 years. Yeah. Hey, look at that. You have to have like a special celebration or something. Yeah. If you need someone to come take, <laughs> be your, be your muse to take pictures of, I'll, 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 oh, I would I'll, love to photograph I guess you I'll anytime, Karen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did not tell her to say that. I know there's some of you listening right now. They're like, oh my God, stop it. Uh, so it is, you kind of, kind of went there, but what is one thing you wish you knew when you first started photography? Was it how to pose people or was it something else? Well, that's all part of the process. I mean, you yeah. can't start at the gate knowing everything. So right. it is kind of fun. Although I wish I could have started now where there's so much information out there. Mm-hmm. I, I do love that challenge of like searching it out yeah. and figuring things out. So I wouldn't really change yeah. anything. Oh, that's good. And I bet your your clients probably teach you too. Some, some of them naturally maybe pose a certain way and you're like, how do I do that again? Or they bring some of their, you know wants and and props and things and you think oh Oh, totally right yeah totally like sometimes I'm not necessarily posing people but just watching them yeah oh and then I'll be like well hang on we're chatting and you're doing something beautiful just let me bring up my camera for a second (laughs) and get that photo and then we can keep chatting right (laughs) that's awesome I I I think that's really cool to be in a room and to experience something like that where you're just literally being yourself and it's another reminder that you're enough. What you're doing is amazing that it, that I want to capture this and I want you to have this in your little book of history of you. And I think that's, I think that's really cool because maybe even before my experience with you, taking photos has always been overwhelming as I've been saying, but it's also been just taking pictures. I'm, I, I'm, I was always more of all I'll take mental pictures. I'll remember that. And hopefully I don't get Alzheimer's one day, but I'll just take mental pictures because Again, having having evidence of something that you f- you might feel is bringing out your imperfections is overwhelming, and it's why a lot of people don't like to do it. I keep coming back to like be able to be in a room with someone like you that really understands because you yourself have experienced that too of of what it's like to actually feel confident, and you look at yourself in a picture and you're like, oh my gosh, I look good. And it's okay to say that because uh, I know when when we took pictures together at the end, there was so many of them and it felt so weird to be able to say, oh, I really like this because then you, you feel like you're being, you're thinking so high of yourself and, and, and you know. And doesn't that go back to that voice that I'm talking about, like the, that way that we were raised, that we're, we can't say things like that? Yeah like damn I'm good looking yeah you know it, it's like you feel like someone is gonna scold you for that yeah like oh come on don't get such a big head Kieran you right know, you shouldn't be saying that yeah um, and, and, and we do that as jokes to like friends and family too we'll do it in such a ha 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 I look great or ha 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 you don't or don't don't get a big head and and even though we're doing it in a joking circumstance, I think it just keeps like perpetuating that and keeps yeah. enabling that in some ways of yes, because I definitely felt that way. There was there's hundreds of pictures. You took like 300 pictures or something like something that. Something like that. And then we have to, like, you can pick six or 12. So, you, so it's like a very small number. And or more. Or, or more. <laughs> 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 Don't tell my husband. Um but you, you're there on this massive screen and they're all there and it's so weird to be able to click through and be like, but I like that one, but I like that one, but I like that one when normally that's not an experience for me. So you, so when you say you're capturing someone in a natural moment, that just makes me feel even so much better that a lot of these pictures that you take are just natural. It's not put your hand here and your hip there and it's just be there and okay I'll, I'll I'll be alongside you so I uh, appreciate that I was gonna ask you so what's your favorite type of shoot weddings and nature and all those things do you have a favorite one well I think these days boudoir is my boudoir. favorite I was wondering if you'd say that oh my god it it the transformation that you see in people because everyone's nervous right yes in the beginning and by the, and this is why I do for, at least for this campaign, I'm doing this. So I do a before and after video. So not necessarily before you have hair and makeup, you can have your hair and makeup done first, 
but it's just capture you on video, capture how you're feeling before we do the photo shoot, and then do the same thing after because I wanted everyone else to see what I see, that people kind of stand up taller with their shoulders back and they're like have this air of confidence mm-hmm. walking out of the studio oh, that yes. they maybe didn't have when they mm-hmm. came in. That's that's amazing, like the kind of data that you collect. And, and a pre and post measure is always the best thing to gauge any kind of situation and to do that for your clients because I don't think they would necessarily think of that themselves especially coming in with all these emotions and to help set the stage for them that way and then they can later when you know that day goes away go back and look at that I'm like do they ever message you back and say oh my gosh look at the way I started out and oh my gosh I can't believe that's me talking like what are some things they say so I, don't, I haven't had anyone message me about yeah. those videos, but um, it's always during the reveal process uh, where, you know, I get the projector out and we're yeah. looking at those photos and you're seeing yourself huge and it's immediate, right? So, you know, I haven't manipulated those images. That's yes. what you look like. Yes. And the reaction that people have where they're like, you know, I was hoping that I might like one or two, Yeah. but now I can't even narrow them oh, down. Yes. Isn't that and amazing? And how awesome is that yeah. to, to be like, there's so many photos of myself that I love yeah. that I'm having a hard time narrowing it down. Like who, when was the last time you had that problem, right? Seriously. Like I, it's so cool that you say so many other women were experiencing what I remember experiencing. Like, it's so cool to be sitting here being like, oh my God, I know exactly what you mean. And you even said you're, cause I asked you too, I'm like, did you touch these up quickly or something? And you're like, no. And because again, you don't want to believe that that natural thing standing there or, or whatnot is you and just who you are. I just, I think that's, I think that's fantastic that you, you capture that for people and for, for anyone that does these photos with you, I think it's, I hope that they go back and they look at that and it's like, how can I have more of that post me? And it's okay to be where I was before, but how do I honor because I, I am enough. I, I look great. I, I can I can look like that too. Uh, but let's just for a second, for those that don't know what boudoir shots are, what are they? So, uh, well, I don't like to pigeonhole it too much yeah. because I think, but I do want to correct one idea of what boudoir is. So if you search boudoir, you may come across a lot of very male gaze images. What do you mean? So by that, I mean like stuff that is that people would never do (laughs) um that is is more like raunchy porn stuff yeah like what is that magazine playboy like playboy and not that like if people want me to take images like that of them i will do that of course but it's so much more broad than that yeah and it doesn't have to be for him actually i prefer that it is for you yeah because i really do think you should be doing this for yourself yes and it can be more just admiring your shape. And it, it can be fully clothed or minimally clothed mm-hmm. or completely naked, right? So, but it's a very broad term because I think for some people, they're not comfortable going all the way. Yeah. Some people are. Yeah. And, but for some people, like they still want to have that kind of sensual imagery of themselves without feeling like they've revealed too much. Right. And so all of that falls under that category of boudoir yeah but I just like to make sure that people think beyond like the playboy totally and, like, yeah you know the hardcore the air, yeah weird poses that which you can do in a very with. very like sexy way because I've seen you do that for clients um I'm so glad that you brought that up because I actually had that written down like what negative myths do you hear because I did th- my photo shoot with you were boudoir shots and uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but I, when, whenever I would tell people that I was about to do them, I almost did it as a test because it was interesting for me to see how many people saw that it was, it could be done in this like sexy way versus some raunchy, dirty thing. And sadly, like a lot of people think it's like this dirty, like, oh, why? Like you're going to just like, I'm just going to go in like full throttle, be nude and you're right that's not what they are and I was telling a friend who I'm like you need she's just she's just this gorgeous woman she's actually gonna if I can get her on the show I'd be so happy she's got she's got wonderful things to say and 
I was telling her, I'm like, you need to do these shots. And we're about the same age. And she's like, no, like me. She's like, oh, I'm going to get more fit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that. Like, hence, like, I was, I've been meaning to do these since I was 20 years old. <laughs> and every year it's like, oh, I'll get more fit. I want to look better. And time passes and things happen. And um, when I told her that she should do them, she was like, well, that's just not like, that's not for me. And I'm like, listen, like, I can tell you exactly who you are. You are this country woman that loves your horses and you could do, you could have your hair in braids and, you know, wear your jean shorts and your cowboy boots. Like, it's not about wearing lingerie. You can wear lingerie if you want. But for me, I, if you know me, you know that I'm a blazer woman. I always wear blazers to work. Oh my God, your blazer <laughs> photos. <laughs> So that that's what I wore was the blazers right. and the nude, and you, I'm covered up. It's done tastefully. My Very. mom, my mom loved my pictures. Oh, awesome! <laughs> I love that. Like she was the biggest. I was a little hesitant because there's this one of me where I'm not wearing a bra, and, but I'm wearing all of her Indian jewelry, and I really wanted to capture like my mom and my heritage and. I was a little worried when, when, cause that's the only one where you can see uh, a part of me. And she, when she called me, she, she was like, that was her favorite one. No way. <laughs> yeah. And she that. got it right away. She's like, it's so like classic Indian. And I'm like, but you can see my boob mom. She's like, I didn't even notice your boob. And I'm like, yeah, no one notices my boobs. Uh, but she's like, no, it's, it's, she, she got it right away. She's like, it's way more than that. It's way more than that. And, and I was like, oh, I appreciate that mom because it took me, it took me a while, you know, to warm up. And I, I think I even said to you, oh, I came in fully covered up and I'm leaving tits out. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like we just, the, the level of comfort that we got to throughout the day, right? I was it like, was you probably awesome. get this all the time from we're all like, oh, my gosh, you can't see me. And then afterwards, you're just changing in front of you and just back to the boudoir. What are some things that, you know, you're doing and you're encouraging others to think about to kind of to change that negative look about boudoir well just getting them in front of the camera right um that's why i'm doing the 40 over 40 yeah is because women over 40 are largely forgotten yeah especially when it comes to quote-unquote beauty mm -hmm. and photography and boudoir like everyone thinks about boudoir being for and maybe not boudoir but just sexy yeah. images being for the younger woman who is quote-unquote perfect yeah. right and yeah I, like these women over 40, yourself included, are so gorgeous and deserve to be have the spotlight mm -hmm. shine on them. Mm -hmm. And by me putting out more imagery like that, it will normalize it. And then I'm hoping that people will start to see when they hear the word boudoir or sexy photos or whatever term that's used, that they'll picture the kind of work that I'm producing mm -hmm. and not Playboy and all yeah. of those kind of yeah. raunchy po like not that there's anything wrong with that I'm not going to say there's anything I wrong agree. with it but I just think that there needs to be some like just more empowered imagery yeah. out there rather than the I want to turn a man on imagery well and you had even said like these these shoot these pictures should be for yourself and it's so funny it's like you read my notes because back here I have written too that I, a point I wanted to make was when I finished work in the summer and all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm not working. Like I was kind of felt like I'm reinventing myself in a way. Like, what am I going to do? And I had all this time to like focus on myself. And I thought, oh, I want to do boudoir shots, but I can't afford them because they, they're expensive for a reason. And then I come across your campaign and there was a bit of a deal. And I was like, okay, if you're going to do them, do them. And then I thought, oh, you know what? I'll do them for Carrie. And... I even brought his white collared shirt, but I never ended up picking one of those as my picks. I wanted to do one of my own because throughout the process, I myself realized that these actually were not for my husband. These were for me and he totally appreciated them, like 100% <laughs> was a big fan of them, um, which made me appreciate that. But it was for me, like I, I even said, I came home that day and I texted you and I said, this was the best therapy session that I didn't realize I needed. Because for years I've been struggling with, you know, like, first of all, 
you, you I grow up think, thinking I want to be a white woman. <laughs> like that was my complex. Like I only saw, you know, and then we had magazines, right? So in the Cosmos, like white chicks and, and yeah. super hot white chicks and that whole Abercrombie and Fitch kind of, you know, look and you're, you're never going to be that tall, never going to be that skinny, never going to be that white, but I'll keep trying <laughs> to be a white girl. And so the, these things start happening and you have these, you, you think you got to look a certain way, society contributes to that, we all, all these sort of things. And you, I just feel like uh, throughout the years as women, we become, at least for me, further and further away from ourselves and our our soul and that grounds us. And we have so many powerful tributes that have been, for all sorts of reasons, taken away. And, and I'm very lucky. I live in North America as a minority woman. So, I, I, you know, I'm not... I'm not a woman that's overseas or I'm, I'm not struggling in other ways. But one thing I feel like we can all share is that that self-worth, it's, it takes so much longer to build, but it's so quicker to destroy and all sorts of life experiences get in the way. And then, you know, like for mm-hmm. me, my stomach is my battle wound of, you know, battle wounds of scars of having these boys. And I, I, I've had to like start to work on, okay, like, what am I, what am I going to do? Like, this is, this is who I am. And either I can start owning it, enjoying it, because who knows, you know, life's short, or I can keep trying to fit into this box that I'll never get to. And so even before my shoot with you, normally I would, if I was going to do something big like that, I would have like restricted my eating. I would have lost a lot of my weight that I would have liked to have uh, to feel more fit and all sorts of things. And my family and I went to Disneyland literally like right before. And, you know, when we all get together, we love to eat. We love to smoke our weed. We love to drink or like we love to have a good time. And that trip, I, not once did I think about I'm going to be too fat because my my whole goal for this campaign was I want you to capture me exactly how I am. It's my little time capsule so that when I'm older and – I can go back and look at this timeline and and say, yeah, damn, I look good. Because I'm noticing every year when I look back at a picture, I'm like, God, I look so good. I know, right? <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I don't want to enjoy it in the past or like in the, I want to enjoy it now and be like, yeah. I feel good now, right? So, yeah. Anyways, I went on a tangent. Then for I, there, I love Facebook <laughs> memories for that. Um, you know how those Facebook yeah, memories yeah, yeah, come yeah, up yeah. because they come up and they remind me. Because I'll see a photo that I remember hating at the time and thinking I was so fat or so whatever. Um, But then I see it now and I was like, why was I so hard on myself? Like, I wish I looked like that now. Totally. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's just it. That's exactly it. So it's like, how do I, how do I appreciate where I'm at now? Because yeah, like time, over time, we can definitely feel that we're missing out versus being where we are and being okay with where we're at so that that was a, that was a big part of that that campaign we're going to come back to the boudoirs um I was going to ask you what's the best testimonial you've ever received from a client oh my goodness well yours was a highlight because I loved how you said that it was like a therapy session Aww. um I don't know I'm kind of on the spot with that one because like there there's been so many good ones but any Anywhere people um, just describe like how they're feeling. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't necessarily need someone to be like, oh, that was super fun. You know, you're a great photographer, great photos. It's like, well, okay. But if I change how you feel about yourself and you are going to now exist in more photos because of it, because you've gained some confidence and you're not going to hide from the camera yeah. <laughs> the next, like, big event that you go to or small event like just girls night out with friends you're not gonna hide from the camera then that is my goal and those are the testimonials that I want to hear and I think if I can add to that because some of us will take the picture it's how we feel after the picture you know when you look at the camera after and you're like oh god and but you have to keep it because six of your seven friends looked great in it so you're like well okay I guess we're gonna this is the one we're gonna share on Instagram you know um that for me that was the thing too is like afterwards when we look at that picture it's about the memory we just captured and we're having such a good time together 
and not about my arm looks fat because I didn't hold it the certain way and you know or my stomach sticking out or whatever it's just like okay what what really matters in that picture and and that's that's a big lesson that I had during those boudoir shots with you you know first of all I have to give models that pose like so much credit because some of those poses I was like I'm getting a leg cramp <laughs> like Lori like yeah I should not have worked out today my leg, my quads are sore and you know in some of these photos like I wanted like I brought in ideas like I kind of want to do this and the model looks like she's just chilling hanging out like that and and squatting that way and you know you're like oh I gotta and so now I'm like so excited when I see the other 40 over 40 like we're in part of that little private group and when you post those I love looking at those because I'm like oh I wonder if she also had you know shaking thighs (laughs) because she had to stand this way or whatever okay so I also in the in your campaign um because I I love looking at these so I I noticed that you had a fellow photographer ask you to shoot her was there was there not a photographer in from Edmonton or something that picked you to shoot her oh so that wasn't for 40 over 40 I think oh that was um, a different one I think she's under 40 actually. Oh, okay, okay. But no, that was, oh yeah, that's actually, that was, speaking of testimonials that were huge honors to receive, um, that was Chelsea Jones um, of Vitality Images in, up in Edmonton. Okay. So she, um, I don't think it was on any particular campaign or anything. Oh, okay, okay. I might have just seen it now I'm like obsessed with all your stuff and follow you. Yeah, because I share testimony, uh, any awesome testimonials that I, that I get I share um, yeah. each Thursday it's kind of on my schedule to share a good testimonial every Thursday and and that was a highlight for me as well because she is the highest accredited photographer in the country in the oh. PPOC what's that which is the professional photographers of Canada mm. so she is um, a very highly accredited photographer herself Plus, she lives in Edmonton, which is three hours away. Yeah. And she chose, like, she knows all the photographers in Alberta. Right. And she chose me to photograph her and traveled down to Calgary to have me photograph her. So that was a huge honor. Yeah. So how did, how did that happen? How did she, what what was it about you that she must have told you what it was about you that led her to you? I think um, she followed me on LinkedIn. Um, we know each other kind of as acquaintances through the PPOC. Like the, it was actually a PPOC conference that, uh, remember that story I told at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that one of those? Um, so I, she probably knew of me, but it yeah, was... Yeah, but there's, you're so underselling yourself. There's got to be a, a reason that she's like, I want this woman to photograph me. Well, it was, she said it was my marketing. So she Ah, followed me on LinkedIn. She liked um, everything that I was sharing. She liked the work that I was doing, but then also just, I think the vibe of it, right? Because the vibe of you. Yeah. She, (laughs) you're, there's people who are going to make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Especially as a photographer, we are very aware of the camera. Like it terrifies me, the idea of another photographer capturing me like I'm afraid of those guys like that guy because yeah. I am far from perfect never been the quote-unquote photogenic person um so it's terrifying yeah so I I love that she saw through just my posting yeah. and stuff like that that she could trust me and it would be worth the trip oh so have you do- you've done the photo shoot now Yeah. And so how was that for you, knowing that you're shooting a photographer and she's going to look at these images after? So also kind of terrifying, (laughs) kind of like today, being like having those tables turned on you, right? Um, So yeah, it was, I was nervous about it for sure, because I'm like, yeah, she's like a judge. Um, And whenever I submit images to competition, it could be someone like her that would be judging them. Wow, okay. But um I was just like, you know what? You got to forget about it. Just treat her like anybody else. That's right. And we had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised to hear that. Because if you follow that, treat her like anyone else, then she would definitely feel the experience. Because the experience is what really makes that photo too. You, You know, when you look at those pictures afterwards, it's like the blood, sweat, and tears put in on both your part. Because you're watching and capturing a moment as well as helping someone pose. 
and you have to articulate in a certain because I don't know how many times I had brain farts and you're like arm this way and I'm I kept doing it the opposite you know and 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 in the beginning too I, I I'm sure if not just myself others too start out so nervous and you can probably see that in the pictures before then the I think my favorite ones with those blazers were actually towards the end yeah. There's so many that I picked out of there because you can start to feel more comfortable. And, and yes. a lot of that comes from you. You're you're the one that's helping sort of manage that energy and put that out there. And so I, I, I'm not surprised to hear that she would have, you know, had a really good experience with you. What Can you talk a little bit about what do you see with your clients prior to a shoot and then how they transition during a shoot and then what happens post shoot? Like any transitions you see from – maybe even the 24 hours before they get there, like anyone that's like calling to cancel for boudoir or nervous or reaching out and then how things go? Well, I have had people definitely say that they consider just, you know, letting that deposit just yeah. go away, right? Yeah. I had that happen a couple of weeks ago with one of the 40 over 40 women. She was like getting so nervous that she was like, you know what, I might just let that money go. Yeah. Um, but she decided to show up and... We end up having a fantastic time. I think it is really common. I could see myself being like that, being like, oh, my God, I don't know if I want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Um, I don't think everyone always tells me that, but I have had that happen a few times yeah. where people have told me afterwards, and I had no idea because they, they aren't visibly yeah. nervous, to me at least, um, but they'll tell me afterwards that they considered canceling. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, be I believe it because I know I was pretty stressed. I like reached out to my sister-in-law and talked to my husband and I was just like giving them all sorts of little cues to give me permission to cancel. Uh, but no, no one did because they were like, why? Like, why now? You know, and, and then I was like, yeah. And then the money too. I think that's great to put a deposit down because people, have some yeah. Skin in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've learned, I'm sure, from a time or two yeah. where people don't, because it's so nerve wracking. Like you have, you know, you're thinking, at least I was thinking, what if I have nothing to offer? Like, what if this is going to be a joke? But then I kept seeing these other women in your campaign where you were posting their pictures and their befores and afters. And that really helped me too, because I was like, she must have been that nervous. And she, there's no way that all of them walked in the door being like, let's do this. So, okay, then, you know, let's let, you know, and I don't know, I think I told you, I'm like, well, I, I shaved the nose hairs. So <laughs> I thought I might as well make use of it. Right. Because it's like, you 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 send us all these emails leading up and I, I was telling my husband like I feel like such a supermodel that got booked for <laughs> like a big campaign you know because it's like this is a week that you start to exfoliate this is you know and it's always like if you choose to here are some things if you're like wanting to do a little bit of work leading up and don't drink the coffee you know and things like that and and light stretching and and all these sorts of things and I'm like oh yeah okay like this feels so cool this is this is a nice transition leading up for someone that's really nervous and doesn't know what to expect and you know it's a nice way to slow them down a little bit to yeah. to prepare and and I relate to that very much um I think that's why I do all those things so an analogy that comes to mind is the dentist mm. I, I I have great memories growing up of going to the dentist yes. yeah for some reason, and I and I figured it out at some point later in my life that it was because I saw my kids having terrible experiences uh -huh. at the dentist, and their dentist was not talking them through it. Mm. So my dentist was amazing. His name was Dr. McPhee, and he kind of just, like, he told you everything that he was doing yeah. so that you weren't just, you know, in this silent room hearing, like, a drill or, like, right. wondering what the heck he, he was doing he would talk you through the whole thing and it made me feel so relaxed. I actually enjoyed going to the dentist. Yeah. Oddly. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's, that's helpful. Like people need that play by play to manage that anxiety and, and maybe not everyone, but a lot of us do. So I think that's great that Dr. McPhee helped. Yeah. Okay. And I am like a naturally a quiet person. Yeah. So something I say often in my photo shoots is, Hey, if I'm being quiet or silent, it's because what you're doing is perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. I think you, I do remember you saying that actually. And that is 
really helpful to say because silence is power and anyone that's feeling insecure is like oh god she's probably like why is this person even you know all the things that you think of so that's that you're very attuned to the environment and your client and and I think that is what makes it so therapeutic is because you go with the flow of your client and to, to some degree because I also see you leading the way which someone as nervous as me because I wouldn't know what to do you know and like I said I had some pictures from Pinterest that I sent you but I don't like I don't know how to pose yeah and do I'm this. super bossy like I, it, I love it I didn't feel it I'm that telling way. you exactly what to do <laughs> down to like moving your pinky finger yes like, yeah you know, a couple <laughs> millimeters this way yeah but yeah but once everything is dialed in then and I'm and I'm quiet which is like my nature like then I'm like okay I need to tell them though that I'm being quiet because there's nothing to change here right yeah and that's such a lovely perspective because it could be that but many of us don't think of it this none of us think Oh, yeah. Okay. So she's quiet because I'm killing it. It's always the opposite. Or most times, right? It's the opposite. So I I appreciate that you clear the air. So who is someone famous you want to photograph? That I want to photograph? Yeah. Oh, have you photographed someone famous already? Oh, like, no, I don't think so. (laughs) Tell me. (laughs) You. I mean, we're going to look back on this. I'm going to be like, I photographed her back in the day. Yeah. I, I let's manifest it. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think I would love to photograph Jan Arden because I oh think that is somewhat realistic because she does live in Calgary or just outside of Calgary. And uh, yeah, I think she's beautiful and she, she kind of falls into that demographic of like some photographers would totally fail with her. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I feel like I, I could photograph her. You'd really laugh well. all day. Yes. I don't know how many <laughs> pictures you'd take because she is. Have you ever seen her in concert? Oh yes, she's hilarious. Yeah. She and and if if her and the bare naked ladies get in a room together, they are like the funniest little. You know, their chemistry is amazing. And yeah, I saw her as uh, I used to live in Mission, and I saw her having sushi. Did you in in a restaurant? Carrie and I we were walking our dog, and we're like, "Oh my god, that's Jan Arden!" But you know, obviously, you don't want to disturb a yeah. local celebrity who's eating their su- their sushi That's but yeah so Canadian of you <laughs> <laughs> sort of banging on the window I mean if it was Justin Bieber that would be a whole different thing yeah uh that's really cool that you'd want to fit I think that's awesome that's a really nice pick yeah, yeah. well maybe meet Jan Arden if you're listening to us hey reach out <laughs> at you know info at mfu podcast it's a short driver I will come to you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's hilarious. Um, Okay, let's play a little game. Let's play Would You Rather. Okay. So would you rather have a camera as your eyes or a sound recorder as your ears? Oh, I guess a camera as my eyes. It's weird, right? Yeah. Okay. Camera as your eyes. Uh, Would you rather do a photo shoot in the rain or the snow? Ooh. I think... I don't know. Like <laughs> falling snow? I don't know. Or... You decide. You decide what. Because I love, I love falling snow. But yeah. falling rain too. Like I love motion. Mm. So whichever one is going to generate more motion yeah. for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you done a photo shoot in, in either I or did. weather? So instantly I thought about a photo shoot I did of a family in Confederation Park. We were booked for like May 5th, I think. Yeah. And you would think you were safe. Yeah. Unless you grew up in Calgary. That's true. I mean, so it was gorgeous, you know, literally the day before. And then the day of the shoot was like a (laughs) foot of snow. But those photos are just beautiful. Are they? Because, you know, Confederation Park with like this huge like poplars overhanging. Oh, yeah. And uh, just kind of gently covered And it's like a spring snow. It's a light breezy snow it's not a today you know december weather you know so i'm sure the lighting's a bit different it was that wet snow Mm -hmm. so the thing that throws it off is like the outfits were not ideal right because we weren't really planning on that and so the kids are just wearing whatever like jackets they have oh yeah um so it throws off the whole you know keeping everything color coordinated which i would normally like to do with the right. family okay but i still love those photos and i love kind of going with the flow mm-hmm. and just having fun with whatever's happening even if it wasn't planned yeah yeah okay 
Um, okay, so let's go back. Would you rather lose your camera gear or lose your hard drive? Camera gear. Camera gear. Yeah. Okay, because you can replace that, but you can't yeah. replace it. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good one. And then would you rather take a photo back in time or of a trip in the future? Like go back in time to yeah. take a photo? Mm-hmm. Or go to a I trip in the future? I would definitely go back in time. And when would you go? Where would you go? I, I would go and take photos of like family members, like my mom, oh. grandma, like all yeah. those people Yeah, who there's not that many photos. Like for if I could only pick one moment in time, yeah. it would be maybe just before I was born or just after. Um, I'm a twin. Oh, yeah. So my mom was like in her words as big as a house when she was pregnant with oh. us. She didn't know she was having twins until oh. like eighth or ninth month I think oh my goodness they did an x-ray of all things to confirm oh wow so things were done different yeah that's why if I'm weird that's why and she knew I think because she was like come on now like look how big I am yeah and like I feel on. like there's two in there um but she just didn't exist in photos ah one I mean because she had two other kids like my brother was two my sister was one yeah and then twins come along so oh yeah hey there's kind of no time but it, i think mainly she didn't exist in photos because like she didn't want to yeah like most of us mm-hmm. right when our bodies are changing and we're not like the size we want to be or yeah. whatever yeah or we don't feel made up like when you have four little kids i'm sure she had no time for makeup and oh, stuff totally you know what that's like i'm sure yeah right so that's that's really sweet and I also remember you when we had our phone conversation and you were the first person that I ever told outside of my family friend realm that I was think you know dreaming of doing this podcast and you know why and a lot of like getting my voice back and why I wanted to be part of your campaign when I wrote in was because I wanted, you know, like it's time to have my voice on my skin, my brown skin because I've always tried to hide it. Uh, and it's time to embrace and, you know, talked about not having pictures and you yourself had, I didn't even say this yet, but you had said that, yeah, you're, there's hardly any pictures with, as kids with your mom and you wanted to rescript that for a lot of women, you know, at this time. And I think you're doing such a lovely job with that because from my experience and from, you know, what, even at this 40 over, uh, 40 over 40 campaign, the feedback you're getting from a lot of us as we write is like, oh, I, I, you know, I found I found my little, like I said, super villain that day. And I'm sure a lot of women are finding something that either we lost along the way. And, you know, postpartum is such a tricky time for women. You, you don't know what to expect, you know, and then like, I'm not even thinking of postpartum depression, because there's that that's a whole different world. Mm -hmm. But but for for those of us that maybe didn't experience that we still had dark days and moments and you don't feel great at all. Then for some women, they don't ever get that little spunk or groove or whatever back and taking these photos and teaching women that in some ways, like what I hear you saying through your 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 whole campaign too, is like, it is up to us to honor that and and help us find that you're there to guide us but we we all do have that worth and we all matter and and we it's not up to anyone else because people can keep telling us you look great that's a great photo but if if you don't believe it yourself none of that matters Mm -hmm. and I think I think your your experience with the boudoirs is like such a nice like I I keep saying that therapy session to kind of reignite that you know and say oh yeah damn I can look that way you know like I don't I look like those Cosmo girls you know in that magazine that I would read growing up and that's all because you yourself want women to understand that capturing this is is good doesn't matter what shape size color whatever it's you know, bringing that internal energy out. And, and I think you do a lovely job capti- captivating that. And it, and it's about capturing you. Um, so what I mean by that is what I like to do, and one of the reasons why I meet with people ahead of time over Zoom to really plan their session is so that it, it is more personalized and customized for you so that the images that I end up taking of you fit how you dream of being photographed. Mm-hmm. 
and maybe have some kind of personal component like the jewelry, uh, all the necklaces mm. that you wore in that photo that your mom loved, that came through a conversation right ahead of time. Yes. Yeah. And with other people, same thing. Like they'll be, you won't necessarily know it. Oh, and the quotes, the quotes yeah, that we did on you too. on my body. Yeah, that right? was so cool. The projector. That was really cool because I was like, is this crazy? I want to, I want to do this campaign and I want to have signs of like, because I love rap and like some rap quotes and you're like, oh my God, I've totally been wanting to do do this on people like through a projector so like it we kind of like came together and they those are the pictures that I chose to buy that I'm gonna hang up in the studio because it yeah. you we had ice cubes uh today was a good day to need my AK on my body and we had Lauren Hill's uh how you gonna win if you ain't right within and I just thought like those were two really good quotes to sort of support this campaign and um, cause again, the outside you can look and f- anyway, but it doesn't matter if you're not feeling it on the inside. So yeah, I, th- I think that po like that pre-session was helpful because it, you, you were good at saying, what do you want to do? And it's like, you don't really think about it until, and there would be way too much to think about it when we show up. You yeah. Know? We like, wouldn't you have can't had time that. to figure that out. Yeah. Like, like in the moment. And I may not have understood it, but by having that conversation ahead of time, I could sort of, well, I instantly knew what I wanted to do with that <laughs> one. But it, it gets me thinking of ideas yeah. and if there's something that I need to go and practice. Because I'd never used a projector. I've seen it done with like shapes and stuff mm-hmm. before, but not with the words. And so I was like, okay, I need to make sure I've got this dialed in because I don't want you sitting there um, for 15 or 20 minutes while I figure it out. Yeah. But those poses were so comfortable that I didn't mind. Thank God it wasn't like (laughs) squatting and there's no way I could do that. Yeah. The squatting (laughs) one is hard, but, um, yeah, I just, I, I like people to know that I, I'm not pumping you through a system. Like I'm systematized to a certain extent, but like, it's all about you and it's about capturing you authentically so that you can look at those images. And even if you're the only one who kind of sees yeah. the customization, you know, it's there. Oh, and I love that you said that because in one of the pictures, it, it is a little hard to see Lauren Hill's sort of quote. And I've had a few people say, I can't really see that. And I'm like, that's cool. Cause I, I like that. They're like, well, we can't even see you. I'm like, I know. Cause I, my face is covered and I'm like, it's, it just, I don't know that whole, I got a, I had this feeling in during that that part of the photo shoot that I loved and now I'll always have that when I see those pictures and you're right other people might be like I don't what does that say or what is that and and again if you're not doing it for yourself right like that's a lot of people to please Mm -hmm. because not everybody's gonna you know be my mom that's my cheerleader saying I love this and all that you know so um so let's let's talk a little bit more about because we keep bringing up the 40 over 40 campaign and so um, and we talked a little bit about it, but let's go back to like, how did you decide to do a campaign like this? Well, I, I've always had this mantra of like helping women exist in photos and, and all that sort of thing. But I do find that women will put it off till the end of time. Yeah. Um, they'll be like, one day, one day I'll do that. I have some people I photograph for other, like maybe headshots and stuff. And they're like, one day, I just need to do this first. I just need to do that first. And I'm like, you're perfect right now. So <laughs> I find that campaigns like this um, get people to take action because there is a bit of an incentive, right? You are getting in maybe at a discount or like just, I what I did was I did it twofold. It was lower risk. So you weren't having to commit to a certain number of images yeah. ahead of time and also a discount just to make it easy because I think that that's sometimes what people need to get off the fence yeah. and stop putting off. Because like you said, you've been meaning to do this for like oh, 20 Oh, yeah. Years. Yeah, seriously. I, I really wish I did when I was 20. But, you know, you think, oh. And then, and then also that negative myth to, oh, Matt, now I'm being like, you know, I don't want to use the S word, but slutty. You know, a lot of people in my life would probably still, a lot of people in my life would say that is like super slutty or skanky of you to do. And I'm like, oh, the press is good press. Thank you very much because you have no idea what I needed to do for me to start dealing with some, you know, issues that I don't, I don't want to have going forward. And so I I think if we can look past 
oh, what people will think and what this might be and really think about who am I doing it for? And if it's for yourself, you're on the right track. If it's for someone else, maybe, maybe not because... I don't know, like, I don't know if you'll get everything out of it. But, you know, I know, I know, I know of friends have done it for their spouses. And, and that was like, that was really exciting. And that worked for them. If, for, for me, definitely, it was get comfortable being you. And, you know, like, I didn't lose that extra weight. Uh, and we didn't Photoshop because I had the opportunity, I think, if I wanted to, right, I could have like Photoshopped my, my, my little roles there. And I was telling my girlfriend because I showed her that we went to Canmore together. Amy, everybody loves Amy because she was on episode uh, three with me and she's a hoot. Uh, we went, went away to Canmore a couple weeks ago and I was showing them to her and she, I was telling her, like, she's like, oh, you Photoshop. I'm like, thank you. Like, that's such a nice compliment. But I actually asked her not to, which was so hard for me. <laughs> like, I wanted to go back. And sometimes, you know, you have a bad day and you're like, oh, but when I go and look at those pictures, I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't because that's, that's just what I look like, not Photoshop. So anybody can look social media ready Photoshopped, you know, and, and I'm really grateful for those people, like you had mentioned earlier, YouTube and social media that are starting to show like what a pose picture, especially those fitness models that are like, this is what my belly looks like. And this is what it looks like when I'm posing. And because for people like me, we need to see more of that. We need some, that's why I'm like, the tummy is a new black. Like if you're taking care of you, then you're doing good and own it and get it out there. Because the more we, more unique people we have out there that are the everyday quote unquote normal people with that are all body shapes and sizes, um, I think the healthier it will be for the those of us that are struggling and even the younger generations uh, versus you know what I don't know about you but this that's what I grew up with you had to look a certain way Mm -hmm. it was ingrained in us and it's really hard to undo oh yeah you know like yeah but sometimes when you go downstairs in your studio and go look at your photos you get reminded ah it's possible to undo it look at look at what we created you know so yeah and and I remember you also saying when on one of our zoom sessions you were like you're you look in the mirror every day and you're not done up every day and that's the real you but sometimes you you get caught up in that's who I am and you know your hair is up in whatever you're wearing your bathrobe and then you go and do a shoot like this and when you go look in the mirror next time remind yourself that I I can have that I do have that I am that and so I I really appreciated that message as well. Yeah, I have that as um, a post that I do fairly frequently um, to put, like, say, take your favorite image or favorite couple of images from your shoot and and print them big on the wall because um, that is a daily affirmation. Yeah. Because you know that's you. You get to go look at it every day so you could look at it as much as you look in the mirror um, and maybe, you know, you didn't get a lot of sleep last night and looking in the mirror is hard, but then you can go look at that image on the wall and be like, but that's me too. Yeah. And just remind yourself to just be nicer to yourself because yeah. if you have... Like you could also take your passport photo and put it big oh, on the wall. Mine's if you so want bad. To just like destroy your confidence <laughs> every day. So it's like the the reverse of that, right? If yeah. you want to work on your self confidence, because we have this constant inner voice mm-hmm. that is so negative. And when people verbalize those things in my studio, which does happen a fair bit, I have to tell them like, no. Nope. This is not a place where you're going to apologize for how you look to me. Like, I think you're perfect. Yeah. So just stop that right now. I only want to hear you say nice things about yeah. yourself. Because it's important that we do that more. Yeah. Because the more you speak to yourself in a nice way, then y- you just naturally will be more confident and you'll be happier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like what I hear you saying is having compassion for yourself. Yeah. And we're so good at having it. T- towards and for everyone else and so it's so hard to do it for ourselves and and I appreciate that because you do teach that and it's like literally a workshop that you're that you're running by doing this that you 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 should really consider putting it out there because more and more because um the kind of workshop that photo shoot is you know those few hours that that 
till the minute you get there and the minute you leave, it's such a, for me, it was such a life changing uh, day. And, and that, okay, you know, I, I am okay. And just as simple as I'm okay, like driving home, I was buzzing. You know, I was like, oh my God, I feel so good. And it was such a good reminder again about, you know, you get caught up in this like Kardashian life and you, you know, you're always looking at social media, all these people. And it was such a good reminder that that is such a small part too of like the big picture, but it's nice to have, it's nice to be pampered and, and, you know, like you said, have a hair and makeup and do that and have somebody, you know, you, you, you had drinks and in terms of like coffee and sodas and all these things. And, you know, Adrian's there doing the whole hair and makeup thing. And it's like, oh, okay, this is lovely. And then I'm driving home to my like normal everyday life, but I got this like buzz and, you know, sitting there with my hair and makeup, you know, doing the mom things like, yeah, okay. You know, and, and for, for days after, reflecting after about, because immediately, immediately you sent me that little tiny sample sheet that had all my pictures on that, you know, was so tiny, like I had to like zoom in to look at, but I would, I, I would zoom in and look at that a lot leading oh, up really? to you sending it because <laughs> it's like, holy crap. Like that, I didn't, it didn't feel like me, it didn't look like me. And it's like reminding myself that was me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just it bringing out that sexy side that I, I think, again, as women, we, we can lose over the years, right? Like, you know, things get in the way, life gets in the way. And, and. Well, and you think that once you're over a certain age or you have kids yeah. that are a certain age that you, you're not allowed to be yeah. sexy anymore. Yeah. But. I mean, we're not that close to the end. Yeah. Well, Betty White, man, I want, like I keep saying, Betty White, she did right? it right. You know, yes. she was a glamorous, sexy woman and she knew it. And she, she was that glamorous, sexy woman till the day she died. And, you know, she died 99. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing? <laughs> like, why can't, why can't we? And she never did the surgeries and though it's like she aged so, she was such a role model in how, how she aged. And I think that's really nice to see for a lot of us and to do this 40 over 40 I think that's great because it does become that taboo time in life where yeah you're all you've had your fun you've had your youth and you know accept what's coming and yes on one hand but also you can look good and feel good while you're accepting what's coming right like and it's usually like towards um or it's in the in the middle of, or maybe even towards the end of, like your role as a mother. Mm. Not not that your role as a mother ever ends, but like that one that's super intense, right? Where it's all about them. Like you've spent literally years mm-hmm. giving everything of yourself. Like you gave up your body, you gave up your sleep, you gave up your evenings and weekends <laughs> for all of their activities and. I, so that's another reason for 40 over 40. I'm in that stage right now because I turned 45 this year. And I'm starting to see a little light at the end of the tunnel. I love my kids. Yes. But my oldest son not playing hockey this year created time for me to start playing hockey ah. for the first time in my life. And I'm like, yeah, damn it. I deserve it. Yeah. Because I've given up so much of my life for these kids and, and you know, maybe – quote unquote, the best years of my life, <laughs> yeah. um, where I was in better shape and, and, mm-hmm. you know, all of that stuff. But, um, so I think it's, it's hitting people at, a, at the right time where they're starting to realize that they can come back to themselves yeah. and that they, it's, it's time to stop giving yourself up completely and mm-hmm. do something nice for yourself, mm-hmm. um, and commemorate this time in your life. Totally. I agree. Like after you said that so well, honestly, because a- after that photo shoot, I said to my husband, I'm like, I really would like to get back to those family portraits that we've never had. We've never done them because exactly what you talked about your mom and, you know, that ooh, we'll get there someday. And, you know, I'm like, I don't want to regret never having that. And I really enjoy this stage my family's in like I love my kids ages and uh, I I think as you know you do self-reflective work it it pays back and it feels great and so we're at this place where I'm like okay we're in a really good spot so I I instead of waiting to get somewhere else let's capture this now and so I I think that came out of that whole photo shoot I didn't think you know I'd want to do anything else I even 
came home and said to my husband that day, I'm like, okay, like maybe I am because he's been on my case and my mom's been on my case now that I'm not working like to dabble back into like the acting world. And I didn't do a whole lot back then because, you know, you only got auditions for black girls or Latin girls like and now brown people are really trending. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> if I want a chance, maybe now. It's your time. It's my time, right? <laughs> and and I said to Carrie, I'm like, I don't, I don't know. But he's got me thinking now because it, it, it was this instant like it's almost like what is that? De- the defibrillator? What is the thing that you use? Defibrillator. You, yeah, whatever, defibrillator. <laughs> uh, but it felt like that, like this revival, leaving your studio of like, oh, crap, that was wicked. And and uh, I, I yeah, I just, you know, I talked to a few friends and, and even my sister. I'm like, you know, it's, it's worth considering at some point, you know, come back to it. Yeah, I, I had to get here eventually on my own. But for uh, other people that might be listening – you know, I, I said this in episode three too, like, don't wait, do the fucking nudes, <laughs> like do them, take the pictures, take them the way that you want. You don't even have to take your clothes off. Just let the camera take pictures of you because, uh, you, you only have so much time, I think on this planet. And, uh, it would be nice to leave legacies and, and leave, you know, moments like Lori as, as a daughter to your mom, you're like, I wish I had, I could see my mom more and have pictures. And I think for our families, our kids, our friends, for ourselves, I think it's lovely to be able to have some of those snapshots. And so I, I would really encourage folks to, to do it. Like don't, don't hesitate. Call, call Lori. <laughs> if not Lori, go, go just take a picture of yourself today. You yeah, know, just exist in photos. Like, just exist. Exactly. I just had breakfast with friends yesterday and um, they, we, one of them took a picture of me with my latte. I like ordered a super fancy latte. <laughs> so they, they had to take a picture and then, um, took a picture of the other two just doing whatever they were doing or showing their food or something just silly for yeah. social media. But they, um, would take the picture and then hand it cause it was a couple I hand it to the other one. Is that, no, no, I don't like that. We got to redo it. Yeah. Um, whereas for me, I've kind of trained myself to not do that anymore. Um, I didn't even look at the photo. I'm like, whatever, post it. Yeah. Because I'm happy to exist yeah. in photos. I used to complain a lot. And I still do sometimes, you know, that my husband doesn't take enough pictures of me. Because I'm oh, like, look at yeah. all these beautiful photos you have with your children with these awesome moments. And I wish you had taken photos mm-hmm. of me. But at the same time, I was also the person who wasn't letting him take photos. Right. Like, oh, no, no oh, don't get that angle. Yeah. And like, oh, my God, my hair is a mess. Or like I haven't had a shower yet or haven't yep. put on makeup yet. And so I'm partly to blame for not existing yeah. in photos. And so now I'm all about, you know what? It's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I like I won't regret not taking the photo because I will let all the photos happen. Mm-hmm. There might be some where I'm like, mm, maybe don't tag me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I think it's just better to exist. I think you're you're better off to exist in mm-hmm. photos than wonder what if. Yeah. And shit, I wish I could go back and do this when I was 35. Yeah. And I chose not to. Now I'm 45. And you just, you're not going to be 35 again. No. Have you done boudoir shots? Have I asked you that yet? No. Oh. I've done some, all the photos I have of me are either done by my documentary photographer sister so they're more of a documentary style okay or sometimes we'll do some photo but a lot of photos of me are usually self-portraits oh. where it's just me in the room <laughs> so what'd you do would you do the boudoir how come you haven't yeah. so i have been thinking about it Kieran. i know a great yes. photographer <laughs> <laughs> i have been thinking about it but it does come down to that fear of finding the right person because like I said I I could be easily crushed yeah <laughs> by yeah. the by the person who because you're either going to make someone's confidence or you're going to break yes. it yeah and so I need to find the right person who I'm 100% sure I can trust yeah and that I wouldn't be sad about yeah yeah I think that's very well said as a photographer because I think people that may be listening today are probably saying yeah that's why I'm not doing it and I'm, I'm telling everyone you you are the person to call because if I can show up and you know most of the time hate how I look and leave their feeling the way I felt and honestly continuing on with that too like that really helped me through some 
bad days after, right? Where you're like, oh, the period's here and now I'm super bloated and, you know, and, or whatever. And, and I, Christmas is coming, is around the corner and I can't stop eating those chocolates. And, and part of me is like, I don't want to stop either because it's, it's Christmas. We indulge. I want to enjoy this. And then the other part of me is like, but you know, then you, you can't pose for pictures during Christmas. And so it's like this love hate relationship you have with yourself and taking those photos with you helps me in moments like this where I'm like, but hold on a second. You didn't regret these. And you know, you were, looking pretty racy in them, right? And you loved them. I, I use that as my, you know, for my branding, for my, you know, and and I would never, like, I don't even wear bathing suits. Really? <laughs> yes. Like, I, I literally just started wearing bathing suits without shirts on top at, on a vacation last year with my family. And every day I would send my two friends a picture of the bathing suit I was going to wear because it was like, I'm going to do this. Um, but yeah, like that's how much my body scared me growing up and then continue to scare me after having kids. And now it's like, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, like you, you see these women walking around, like when we were in Mexico, there was this one woman that was of Latin descent and she wore this bathing suit that I would never in my life consider getting in. And it was like, I couldn't even, there's a lot of holes in it. That's all I remember. And she didn't have, you know, a flat stomach Kim Kardashian. She had a normal woman. She was like this, this woman that had, had a booty and had this body, but she had her red lipstick on and she was walking around the pool and I could not stop staring at her. (laughs) I was like, who is this woman? She was so, and honestly, it was like what you're saying was the energy that she was carrying about that you know, in turn, lets the rest of us be like, that's a gorgeous person because it's how she's carrying herself versus, okay, great. You look hot, like whoever, but you, you, where are you? Where's your voice? Because, you, you know, like, again, it comes from the inside. So I, I appreciate people that, you know, whatever body type they are, they dress and do what they do um, because it helps people like me every day when I see, every, every, you know, people not covering, you know, like a lot of my pictures would be with my kids so that they could cover me. Yeah. <laughs> That, so when you saw that's a common one right yeah. okay right it's like come here so like it's a perfect way to hold them they're at this perfect height now especially my 11 year old and and it's like okay can't can't hide behind that like that's not cool right either and so yeah I think it's it, it was a nice little turn so so any anything today that you that you wish we talked about or that I'd asked you about or that you want to share maybe even a little more about the 40 over 40 campaign yeah, I guess um, I could tell you because we started talking about that before about one of the reasons I started um, the 40 over 40. And I guess one of the reasons for that timing was I did go on a workshop in June of last year or this year, I guess, mm-hmm. um, to Italy. Mm. And it was kind of a boudoir specific Ooh. workshop with like my mentor, Sue Bryce, who I mentioned and then two other amazing boudoir photographers, Cara Marie, who's located in Italy. She used to be from Austin, Texas. Oh, cool. And um, a fellow Canadian, Terry Hofford, who's from Winnipeg. And she, all of them were just incredible. Um, but Terry especially um, was especially moving because she is all about just honoring the body that you have with its scars, with its mm-hmm. quote unquote imperfections and all of that. And celebrating it mm-hmm. because we're, we're not going to become somebody else. That's just right. And we only have one life. I mean, wear the goddamn bathing suit, please. <laughs> right? Well, I bought, just so you know, I might go on vacation and I bought two more. I bought a red one. Yes. Because it's like, it's so time good. to just start wearing it, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I did want to mention that that was part of why I... I was doing this at, at this time and doing boudoir specifically because in the past I've, I've called it more like glamour um, and people will come and will wear a lot of dresses and, you know, and even just jeans and t-shirts too, like mm-hmm. anything cute. Um, and I had a feeling that some people, not everyone, but some people were holding back, that yeah. they might have had something in their bag, like some lingerie mm-hmm. and maybe they never got like felt like they had permission to bring it out. Right. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go full on with this then. 
and I'm going to say this is a boudoir campaign. We're we're going there. Yeah. And it still is going to be what you're comfortable with. Right. But it kind of gave those people permission yeah. to bring those things and wear those clothes or like not wear those clothes. Right. Um, so that's why I think I loved it so much yeah. because it is just no one's holding back right. on this one. And it's going to culminate this amazing art exhibit in the spring, mm. uh, which is going to be at Sea Space and Marta Loop. And the show should hang for a full month if it oh, goes according wow. to plan. So, so what I, do you mean? Like you're going to take s- some of these photos and display them? Yes. I, I, why did I not know? <laughs> How did you not know that? <laughs> well, I am Kieran, so I miss a lot of details. Uh, I, I think that's amazing. I, I honestly don't... I mean, maybe I did know this and I just have forgotten because that could I be me too. Forgot, maybe I did because I was like, this is, an event. oh, this is amazing. Because my husband's been asking, like, is, is, is there something like, is this towards something? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's just this kind Oh, no, it totally <laughs> is, Kieran. Okay. I love that I'm surprising you on the podcast. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. So, what do you, so what's like, can you break it down what that'll be like? What do you, what, so what do you plan to do there? I wanted to hold an art exhibit. So, to represent, each woman in this campaign. So yeah. there'll be a single image of each of you, which is going to be so hard to yeah. just narrow it down yeah, to one. I'm glad one. you get to pick it. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be so hard, but it's going to be beautiful. And originally my intention was to have an event, you know, it would be a few hours. Yeah. I would hang everything up and we would all enjoy it. We'd invite all 40 of you oh, to bring wow. your family and friends. Um, but then one of my 40 over 40 participants, Heather, asked me um, when we were doing our consult, she's like, do you have a venue? Because I have one to recommend. Oh, that's so cool. Networking. I yes. love it. So she told me about Sea Space, okay. which is a place in Myrtle Loop that is like designed for artists to hang their work and oh. for an extended period of time. So you can hang it for a week, two weeks, a month. I'm hoping to hang it for a month. And yeah. then at some point in there, I will hold an event. So we will all get together. Oh, that's so awesome. At some point um, and enjoy that show together. And there'll be some incentives to go. Um, but for those people, like Karen is one of my participants. She works way up north and I think two weeks on, two weeks off. You know, it's possible that her or somebody else like maybe is going to be out of town during the event. So this way they're not going to miss it, right? Yeah. Or if they have friends who missed it, they can be like, go check it out. Yeah. You know, it's a whole month. You can get there. That's so. a, that's like the next level of this therapeutic workshop is is putting your your portrait out there. But to do it with a village of women, like I, I don't know how I miss this. And I'm so glad that we talked about this today because <laughs> – I am so excited that you said that there's a possibility that we get to meet each other because we're meeting each other through and we're not really we don't know each we're not talking to each other but we're we're watching each other's videos and liking each other's posts as you're like encouraging this and it'd be so cool to see people in you know in like life form to ask them what was that like for you and now you're on this wall because I'm sure every woman has their own version of what I'm saying today too and so yeah. That's, that's amazing that you and want that to do that. that was completely the point. So these videos you keep referring to, that, um, so those are in my private Facebook group. It's called Learn to Love Yourself, a VIP community with Lori McBrown Photography, which is a mouthful. <laughs> um, but just so you know, yes. that's the only place you're going to find them right now. And um, so please join anyone who's listening so you can check out Kieran's videos and everyone else's. But um, one of the things I tell people when I ask them to join that group is like, this I want you guys to create a little community. Yeah. And you are gonna have the opportunity to meet each other in person as well. So get to know each other in this group yeah. okay. and encourage each other and support each other because this is hard for everyone. Mm-hmm. It's like a little nerve wracking. And so the more supportive we can be um in this group, the more of a safe space yeah. it yeah. feels like. And it really encourages those people who are thinking about maybe backing out to, yeah. to just go through with it. Totally. Right? And you know, like words Kind words go such a long way and for somebody to like a photo of, of, you know, like someone else to like a photo of some, you know, of yourself, like that's, that's amazing. And A, it's for you because people I think have really connected to you. I know I'm not the only one. I'm sure all of these women have some sort of connection if they didn't already know you. And then, like you said, this other layer of us getting to know each other and, uh, you know, little words of 
great job or a thumbs up is going to go a long way, uh, you know, be, and in one hand, I get it, it's kind of sad, you know, that you need the like, but that's not really what this is about. This is what you're doing is you're cultivating this village. And I think it's also, and I don't know if this was your intent, but it's sort of what we talked about earlier, like teaching women, role modeling for women, how we can be supportive of each other. And a lot of us women, by the time we hit our forties, we've lost a lot of our good friends along the way. And it's very rare to have friendships and, you know, have converse, deep conversations with a girlfriend because we either left them when we started our family or, or whatever happened. And there's this loneliness in this decade as well when you don't have a connection or friend. And, and I really appreciate what you're doing because you're creating this community where you're saying let's role model for each other, let's encourage each other, let's help each other and, and you know, tell each other you look good girl because hearing that you know like you said it can make it or break it and I think when women are putting themselves out there you know with the camera and the way that they are with you that's that's a lovely message to send so I I really appreciate that and I'm so glad because I'm so there in the spring yes. I, I, I can't wait to <laughs> to go and check it out and also m meet some of these lovely humans that felt safe to to take these photos with you and man oh man the way that you captured you know I, I can speak for myself but also these women that I I've seen their pictures on their own I'm like damn there's a few times where I've literally said damn girl <laughs> it's like <laughs> way to go right and it takes a lot there's there's a story behind each one of those women and you're doing a really nice job bringing that out and I cannot wait to hear when you book your own boudoir shots now because yeah. that's going to be you know it's a little bit of a different journey finding the photographer that's going to be the thing for you now yeah. but maybe... it's been on my list for a long time yeah. and just like the people who I'm talking about who like I'm like pushing them to exist in photos I am that person like I've been thinking about it for literally like since my late 30s yeah but thinking oh I've gotten kind of out of shape at this point I should yeah. I'll get back. I'll whip myself into shape by the time I'm 40. Well, all I've done, Karen, <laughs> is gain weight. Yeah. yeah and well. along with the weight, wrinkles that I didn't <laughs> have when I was 37, damn it. So I'm like, oh, if I could tell you anything, just take my advice. Um, you're never going to go back in time. So just stop putting yeah. it off. Yeah. So, and I need, and I do, I, I'm trying to remind myself that exactly to, um, yeah, if I saw the right photographer and and then they had an offer where it was like, you know what, I just got to take action and I can't put it off. Yeah, I think um, I think I would probably be more likely to do it. I just haven't seen that yet. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will because you meet a lot of people along the way and you you will. And I think I hope I hope that works for you because I think that's a lo another lovely way to role model is, you know, it's it's in my world working in a therapeutic setting you know you you can't support people through crisis and counsel them and you know my colleagues who are therapists without also sitting in the other chair as well right you yeah. it'll help you probably be a better photographer 100%. going through that process as well so I'm excited to to hear how that goes when it happens Yes. Yeah. I will let you know. Yeah. Okay. I know you're probably going to follow. <laughs> no, I, am. Done it yet? I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because I just, that's funny, right? Because now I'm on the other end, which is like, oh my God, people, please do it. Please, please do it. Like, don't wait it out because it's more than just racy pictures. It's, it's a conversation with your, you know, younger self, a conversation with your adolescent self, kind of conversation with the favorite you, maybe it was in the 20s or the 30s, conversation with current you. And it helps for the future conversations with yourself. So I, I, I that that's what it was for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would do it again. I, I would, I would 100% come back and do it again. Um, because it, there's so much more to gain out of it than not in, in, in my experience. So that's awesome. Yeah. I love hearing that. And one thing I wanted to bring up, cause I know this is going to come up in people's minds and you're going to have a hard time with me saying this, but people are going to look at your images and be like, she looks like a model. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> what issues could she have? And so I think that you being so open about this 
it's a good reminder to people you don't know what people are saying to themselves yeah. in their own head. And you might look at that person and think like, I wish I looked like that. I would have no problem taking yeah. photos. But we all have these things in our head that kind of hold us back and mm-hmm. cause us to, you know, wear shirts over our bathing suits. Yeah. And miss out on opportunities like that when you brought up swimming. I'm like, God, the number of like swimming opportunities I missed out on in like grade six, seven, eight. Yeah, totally. Because <laughs> I was like too embarrassed to be in a bathing suit. Yeah. I was also super hairy, you know, being a brown girl, like you're just super hairy and mini little Chewbacca. But it was, it, that was part of it too. But we all have our, you know, reasons why we don't, you know, like it's scary putting on a bathing suit. And then, or or, or taking off clothes, right? So, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, not at all. No, we just all all have our own self-judgment. So we think everyone else is judging us. But you know what? Um, They aren't. Yeah. Everyone's kind of selfish. Like, we're actually only thinking about ourselves. So if you just remind yourself that, like, you know, you're the only one paying that much attention to you and to, like, that specific area of your body other people are... You might have that one asshole who points it out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah but everyone else, like, they have their own things. And like you, you know, you see in someone else who you're, like, recognizing that she, that girl in Mexico could have been someone who would hide, um, is instead flaunting it yeah. and showing her confidence. And it, like, it's mesmerizing mm-hmm. and magnetic that the more you, you – appreciate that the more you could move towards that yourself and totally. be that person yourself yeah and you don't realize that you might be you might be the one that's influencing that for some you know like yeah. that, that woman you're that we talked about in mexico she she's having a good time i don't i don't know i don't think she put that bathing suit on to say today i'm gonna teach women a lesson and she's doing her thing she put her bathing suit on she's loving her life and yet she, she may not have any idea that she's from all the way over here now, I'm still talking about her being like, I appreciate that she did that. And she has no idea. She so has no idea. Some heroes don't wear capes. They wear bathing suits with lots of holes in them. There you go. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Actually, you know what? On that note, I uh, was going to ask you, do you have any like Lori-isms, you know, something that you'd want to share about, uh, I don't know, like, like a quote or like a favorite photo quote or? My favorite quote is feel the fear and do it anyways. Mm. That is by an author and I'm going to forget her name. You're going to have to look that up and put it in the show. Say notes it again. Say, say the quote again. Feel the fear and do it anyways. Feel the fear and it's do it anyways. It's actually the title of a book. Okay. So, yeah. um, I feel like her name might have been Karen something. I I just can't remember her name right now. But, um, yeah, I I just think we need to take action. I am such, like, an overanalyzer type of person, which is why I put things off, because I I need to analyze them until I've got it, like, perfect. And um, lately, in the last few years, I've been trying to unlearn that in myself and just take action instead of um, trying to be perfect yes. because the perfect perfection is never going to happen. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, that's why I think that that quote is the perfect mm-hmm. thing to, I repeat that in my head um, for myself all the time. And it's something I tell to people um, through my marketing that like, you know what? Yeah, it's going to be scary, but yeah. do it anyways. Yeah. Damn it. Do it. I, I know. <laughs> I agree. I appreciate that because you're right. Like, the best perfectionists are also the best procrastinators. You know, like it's you're, like you said, you we've been saying this the whole time. I'll do it next year. I'll take the picture. I'll look better. I'll look greater. My skin, this and that. And it, there's nothing more liberating or I, I mean, it's pretty high up there with how liberating it is to do that, take that action and land. You know, it's like one foot in the door, one foot out. But when we land and make a decision about anything, in this case, it's about taking photos it does build that confidence, that self-esteem and it, and it does help. And I, and I, you know, when you're making the point about for people, if they were to see, you know, my photos and think, Oh, that, that can't be for me. I think there's also that other part when people look at sometimes these photos and they think, for example, when I look at photos of a model or someone online, I might think, Oh, whatever, I can do that too. I can look that way. And we, we, you know, downplay it. 
And I think it would be so great if we start to say just something so simple, like you look great, you know, because like you said, we that person that took that picture, that you don't know how hard that was for them to do. And you making a comment like you look great or that looks amazing, you know, it, it those little things help build people a lot too. It could mean the world to them. Totally. And you have no idea. 100%. And you do that so well during the shoot. You're so authentic. You're so genuine when you say that's great or, you know, when you even say it, if I'm quiet, that no news is good news. Let me do what I'm doing. And it's 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 so nice in that room because that that was part of where my anxiety started to trickle down. And, you know, by the end, I'm, like I said, I had literally no bra. And I was like, all right, let's take a picture without with my boobs hanging out. Uh, <laughs> And the best part is that that made it to your final collection. Oh too. my god, it did! I know it wasn't supposed to. The one there was a few that I thought that would that I actually took out, and the the few that I really didn't think I would. It's 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 interesting, yeah. And it was just it was fun bringing a part of who I was to that photo shoot, and it didn't feel like it was someone else. It felt like it was me in my clothes and you know you had talked about those glamour shots that you used to do and I wonder if that's part of what you do now because you have a little hanging rack where you want us to put all of our looks you know onto and you also ask to go through them because it, it, it goes by so fast like we actually went over our time and and I also appreciated that because you thought maybe you thought we were getting something out of you stayed with it but we went we like it was I, I had a free day I, we took a lot more of your time but it's easy to forget if you have a look or picture you want because we're doing a lot. And so you were good at taking notes around, okay, I hear you want these, you know, these pictures for sure. Your mom's jewelry, you said you must have. And then you go through every outfit too and say, okay, you want to do this one? You want to do this one? And and I'm really glad you did that because I would have been the person that would have kept a lot of things in my bag that day. Yeah. You know, like I went and got all this fun stuff, but when it came down to it, I was like, I'm not wearing this bodysuit. Like, what am I it's thinking? It's almost like once it's hanging up there yeah. and I've seen it <laughs> that you can't take it back. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to put this thing up. But yeah, and those pictures like – those like we talked about the photo the photo shop didn't happen so you can see my tummy and my rolls and the things that bother me and it's like I can still see them in the pictures not like I can't see them but it's not all I see which is like really nice and a change of pace for me that I see a lot more than that problem area I I see this woman that's having a great time with her hair done and her red lips and learning a lot about herself and reconnecting with parts of her that she's lost along the way but has always been there and that's the thing parts when we think oh that was my youth or that's where I was at it's like it's still there somewhere if we want it to be it doesn't have to be lost and so so anything anything else that you want to add today because I, I always feel like I can I get selfish and keep my guests forever um, but anything Anything that else that you wish I had asked today or one thing you may want to leave the listeners with today? Well, I think I've repeated this again and again, <laughs> but um, just because it's at the end and it's going to be like one of the last things you hear from me yes. exist in photos. Yeah. And you, you don't have to do it for yourself at first. You can say it's for somebody else. Um, but I want you to exist in photos and one day you will thank me and definitely your kids and the people who love you will... Thank you for existing. That's really well said. And I, after each episode, I listen to it and then I pull out direct quotes and then I send it to my guest and they get to name the episode. So I have a feeling that I, I have a feeling with what you may decide you want to name the episode with, because I appreciate that you're saying exist in photos and, and uh, I, I, I'm happy to leave it at that. So, so thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming on today and spending time with me. Um, for Anytime, Karen. This has been a blast. Oh, good. Yay. Thank you. So you've been on podcasts before. So this is, this is how would you rate on? Oh, I don't know if I want to know. Now my armpits are sweating. I don't know if I want. I was no, going to say, how would you amazing. rate this? But I don't know. <laughs> this is amazing. 10 out of 10. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. You're so welcoming. Like this, like I mentioned earlier, this is nerve wracking for me to walk in here. I'm like, oh God, I hate being the center of attention. But you made me very, very comfortable. And Aww. and I feel like we just had a fun conversation. We did. Yeah. And that's what it is. It really is. Once the headphones go on, it, it for me too, it feels like it, we could talk for hours and we're talking about photos and you would think, oh, how much could you really say about it? But it's more than that. Yeah. You know, and, and it takes a lot to exist in a photo. And so thank you for talking about the things that we could be paying attention to along the way that to help us want to be in those photos. So with that, um, I'm going to thank everyone else for listening today. Uh, if you want to reach me about this episode or any other ideas that you have, and also if you want to join me um, along the, this body image campaign that I'm doing, reach out to me. I'm looking for a few people that want to come on and share uh, their side of what it's been like for them. So you can reach me at info at mfupodcast.com or on Instagram at mfupodcast. Uh, and it would be really good if if folks that like what they're hearing are continuing to provide feedback. I really appreciate it as well as uh, subscribe. It, it's free. It doesn't take a whole lot to do with whatever platform, if you're on Apple or Spotify, um, and it helps me out in the long run. So um, let me know if you need any help with that. Otherwise, thank you again, Lori, for being here today, and uh, we'll talk soon. <laughs>